Well, I'm not worthy of your matchless grace. You're worthy. Thank you. 
Welcome to Bible study. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we approach your throne of grace giving thanks to you. Thank you for all your many and wonderful blessings. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask you uh, to forgive us of our sins, rather than by our various thoughts and deeds. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have done for us and all that you will do. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just ask you to be with our sick and shut in at this time. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just pray that you would just give them a reason, portion, of health, and strength. Oh, Heavenly Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for our uh, man serving on t this evening. We just pray that you will give give him the, the mindset to remember the things that he have studied on this past week to give your word, oh, Heavenly Father. We just thank you and we love you. In your son, son Jesus Christ's name, amen. And now, our beloved minister. Hello, hello, good evening, family and friends, saints of God and lovers of the truth. Welcome to Bible study. Now we hope, trust and pray that this message finds you and your family doing well at this time. We know that God is in the blessing business and we have a reason to praise his holy name. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Oh, how magnificent, how marvelous, how mighty, how majestic, and how matchless is the name of the Lord our God. It is a wonderful privilege for us to assemble here at this specified time of spiritual nourishment and encouragement that we might receive another dose, another round, another installment of the word of God. As the word is a lamp to our feet and a light along our pathway, it is our prayer that something is said that will encourage you as you continue to walk with the Lord. Now to those that are visiting this channel, we'd like for you to share with us what city, what state you're watching from. Uh, we always love to connect with the community and each and every time that you're blessed to come here and study with us, we want you to know that we're equally blessed to study the word of God with you. And now to the superlative saints of the South Union Church of Christ. Oh, how sweet it is to be a child of the King. If you have your Bible, if you would please open up your Bible, navigate over on your electronic devices, meet us or beat us in the book of the Psalm 105 the 105th division of the Psalms. I believe that there is a word from the Lord, amen. If you're ready on tonight, just plug into the live chat and type, it's time for our blessing, amen. It's time for our blessing. We come in full expectation, hallelujah somebody, that the Lord will give us a blessing for what we need it for, that we might be successful on this journey called life. Psalm 105, we'll begin reading with verse 17. The Bible, the word of God reads, He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron. Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. Do you read that in your Bible? <laughs> Family, we would like to pull from a thought and theme as we continue to study overcoming our afflictions. Overcoming our afflictions. Take a moment and someone type that into the live chat right now. Overcoming our afflictions. Wherever you are, pause for the cause and repeat after me. Overcoming our afflictions. Family, it is altogether realistic and practical for Christians to have some hard and difficult trying times. Just because you're going through times of difficulty does not mean that God is not with you. I want someone to see in a real way on tonight that you might be going through some times of difficulty. You might even be tested right now. But as you are being tested, please understand and underscore 
that God is still with you. There are many who have gone through some great tragedies, tribulations, and misfortunes. But yet, through it all, they relied on God's power. They relied on God's mercy. They relied on God's love. And God brought them out of the miry clay. Do I have a witness in here, someone who can testify that they've seen some hard times? If you've seen difficult times, if you've seen dark days, don't be too proud. Share. Type into the live chat. Let somebody know. Encourage somebody that I have seen my share of difficulty. It's time that we stop painting the erroneous facade that we don't struggle as Christians we have ups and we have downs. We have good days. We have some, some trying days, some difficult days. We have good moments and we have some not so good moments. But yet in the midst of it, God is still with us and God will give us the strength that we need that we, we too can overcome. Well, now the psalmist points us into the direction of Joseph. How many of us are familiar with Joseph? We're familiar of his account recorded in scripture in the book of Genesis. As a matter of fact, turn with me now to Genesis 39. Let's go back and let's hit the rewind button. Let's travel back in time to Genesis 39. We want to begin reading with verse 20 because this man named Joseph is a figure and a type to give us strength that if God can bless him to overcome, he can also bless you and he can also bless me. Genesis 39 verse 20, listen to this. The Bible says, and Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound and he was there in the prison. But watch this now, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Do you hear this? <laughs> Joseph, a man who had done no wrong, had been mistreated by his own brethren, his own kinfolk, his own family. I don't know who you are, but there's a word of encouragement for us in that particular text. That even when family mistreats you, it doesn't mean that God is not with you. <laughs> Sometimes family, listen, I was told a long time ago and taught a long time ago that you have a choice in selecting friends but you can't always select who your family is. Huh. You don't have a selection of who's going to be in your family. Your family is divinely assigned to you. But just because someone is divinely assigned to you physically does not mean that they're always going to have your best interest in mind. And such is the case with Joseph. You know the biblical record that uh, they were jealous of Joseph. They were envious of Joseph and his brothers, his own brothers, his own blood sold him into slavery. He could have died. Uh, he could have uh, been mistreated and was mistreated, but they did this all because of their envy, all because of their animosity, all because they saw the father treat him differently. And they wanted to get even. They wanted to get back. They wanted some revenge. And so they mistreated Joseph. But even in the midst of him being sold into slavery, it didn't mean that God wasn't with him. <laughs> God prepared him to be sold and he could have been killed, but he was sold. Watch it. God preserved his life. 
in allowing him to be taken in by caravan. But as he's in Egypt, he could have been eradicated. He could have been um, in exile. He could have been placed under lock and key. But God found favor in his life. And God granted this favor. And even though he was placed into prison, God was still with him. I know sometimes maybe we feel all alone, but God is still with you. I know you feel like it's you against the world. You're in it all by yourself, but God is still with you. God was with Joseph and he allowed what he uh, took to his hands to prosper. He gained favor in the sight of the enemies. Don't forget, Egypt, <clears throat> they are the enemy of God's people. But yet Joseph gained favor in their sight. And they knew that they could trust Joseph. That's why they put him in charge of the king's treasure. He rose up to be second into the command in all of Egypt. But it was because even in the midst of his affliction, he did not lose sight on the Lord. And that's a word of encouragement for somebody who's listening. That if we don't lose sight on the Lord, the Lord never loses sight of his own. You may have to go through some times of testing. You may have to go through some times where it feels difficult, where you want to give up. But don't give up because God is still with you. Now, the favor of the Lord suggests that the presence of God was with Joseph as he continued to walk. So when we have the favor of God with us, we know that the presence of God is with us. And whatever God's presence is, his power is also. <laughs> God was with him. But not only was God with Joseph, God was also with Moses. Turn with me to Hebrews 11. New Testament passage of scripture, Hebrews, the 11th chapter. And uh, let's listen at about 25. Hebrews 11, verse 25, the Bible says, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Do you hear that? Look at verse 26. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Now, this is deep theologically speaking, because in the Old Testament, you have Moses. And Moses is counted as being faithful in that he endured the affliction and the hardship of his people. Now, he didn't have to. The Bible is very clear and emphatic to say that he had an out. He could have uh, lived as Pharaoh's son and, and been distanced from the suffering and the oppression of his people. But he chose affliction. And I don't know, but in this text, it's revealed unto us that he did it for greater riches found in Christ. Now, somebody who reads their Bible ought to ask, how is it that he had greater riches in Christ when Christ wasn't even revealed until New Testament times? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Somebody's thinking, how is it that Moses counted it better to be regarded in Christ's riches than the riches or the treasures that were found in Egypt. Family, I believe that even when we suffer, when we suffer, when we are afflicted, when we go through our time of testing, yet we go through it faithfully, we too identify with the riches of Christ. Oh, Moses lived many years on the face of this earth before Christ gave his life. 
but through faith and by faith. Remember now the chapter is about faith, Hebrews 11. So what God is showing us is that with faith, through faith, as a vehicle of faith, you too can be successful in the midst of your affliction. And when you go through it by faith, it is accounted unto you as righteousness. He chose the riches of Christ. He said, I'm going to suffer. I'm going to bear the burden. I'm going to go through my time of testing, but I see a greater reward waiting on me at the end. Family, I'm so thankful that I'm not relying on a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, <laughs> but no, something far, far better than gold. Streets, a home in heaven, walls of jasper. I will live with the Lord forever if I hold on to the very end. Someone saying, well, preacher, what you are saying sounds good. It sounds reasonable, but how can I make it tangible to my life right now today? How can I overcome the affliction at hand, the difficulties, the struggle, the stress, the strain, the plight, the peril, the trouble that I'm experiencing? How can I overcome it in a tangible, in a real way? Well, that's what Bible study is all about. Because it provides clarity in the midst of your crisis. How to see, how to handle what you've been looking at all along. See, sometimes we won't be able to move the burden. We won't be able to do much about the affliction because the term affliction in and of itself it suggests suffering, adversity, crisis, calamity, trouble. But maybe, just maybe, God is not as interested in moving the crisis or the affliction as interested as he is in moving us bringing us higher, taking us up, carrying us over. And sometimes we are not prompted to move as we should move until we have to go through some affliction. I want you to know that you can overcome there are a litany of scriptures and examples and people and places where God met his people in the midst of their trouble and their problem, but they still came out with a testimony. Do you think perhaps the Lord is utilizing your life, my life, so that we can emerge with a testimony? so that we can speak of his goodness, so that we can encourage somebody else who's going through. We don't have to have the exact same trouble to know that trouble, come on now, trouble doesn't last always. I want someone to trust God to the very end. Don't lean on your own understanding. But in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. Amen. I say amen and praise God. Overcoming our afflictions, you will win in the end. We're grateful for you studying with us on tonight. And listen, if you'd like further Bible study, prayer, we believe in the power of prayer and we'd love to partner with you. Just call the number that you see at the bottom of your screen and we can set up prayer time or Bible study time. We know that God still hears and answers our prayers. 
And as we always say, each and every time, we're blessed to study with one another here at South Union. Here at South Union, we love you. And there's not a thing that you can do about it. Have a blessed week. You are an overcomer in the Lord. Be blessed. Good night. Oh, yes, your word. Your holy saint. Oh, holy is your name. Say that.